Hey guys, Patrick here from the Garage Band Guide. Beginners, this video is for you. I'm going to show you five things that you need to know. And if you're not a beginner, well, you might as well stick around anyway. You never know, you might learn something. When you open your new Garage Band project, the first thing you're going to see is this new project window. So, first off, you're going to want to name your song. You're probably going to want something memorable, something that's going to stick in people's heads. For this one, we're going to go for Death Falcon from Hell, Stole My Woman Away. But feel free to go for whatever you want, whatever's going to be memorable. From here, you can also choose where you're going to save your project to. It's probably a good idea to have a specific folder just for your GarageBand projects. That way everything's nice and neat and you don't end up with a desktop full of random GarageBand projects because that's just wrong. You can change the tempo here if you want, but to be honest, it's just as easy to do it inside your project, so you're better off just leaving that for now. Time signature as well, you're fine to leave it at the default one unless you're specifically recording a song in a different time signature. Most of the Apple loops are in this default signature, so you'd be doing yourself a favour if you leave it as is to begin with. The key you can change again if there's a particular song that you're recording in a particular key. Otherwise, feel free to keep it in C, the default one. If you've run across any problems with the way things are sounding pitch-wise or key-wise within your project, it's dead easy to fix, as we'll find out in section number two. Here we are in Death Falcon from Hell Stole My Woman Away, and you can see I've got the loop browser open on the right-hand side there. Now, there's not very much information about these loops here, so we're going to want to change that before we go any further. So hit command and comma together to open up the GarageBand preferences panel and select loops at the top. You'll see there's a checkbox here that says display original tempo and key. Give that a little click and you'll see as if by magic the information appears in the loop browser to the right. Now 99% of the time you're not going to have any problems putting loops of a different key into your project if it's a different key. If you do run into any problems, Happily, it's quite easily fixed, as we'll see in this example. Now, I must warn you, this sounds pretty manky. It's not nice at all. Oh, that's horrible. Horrible, horrible. Okay, so we need to fix that. To do that, select the track that you need to fix, you need to change the pitch of, and open up the track editor at the bottom there. You can see the pitch slider here. Now what we're going to do is manually adjust the pitch of the track to get it in line with the key of the rest of the project. So we'll give that a try just now. It's maybe a bit high. That's not quite right either. Okay, we'll go back and give it another try just now. Yeah, that's kind of sounding a bit better. Okay, we'll try that again from the top. That's much better. Yeah, you can see that's brought it in line with the key of the rest of the track. And you can see how simple it was. Ah, the good old Psycho region. You can use the Psycho region in a couple of different ways. You can either select an area of your project that you want to just constantly loop, or you can select an area of your project that you want to record several takes on. To get your Psycho region up, just hit the button at the bottom that looks like two arrows chasing each other, and it'll pop up at the top. You can move it about, you can resize it, do what you want, but once you hit play, it'll just loop within the area that you've selected. To record takes, again, just select an area that you want to record your takes on and hit record. And that's pretty much it. Once the playhead gets to the end of the section, it'll loop back to the start and start recording the next take. 
So I'll show you an example of this just now. I'll go ahead and record a few takes using the sidecar region and I'll meet you back here in a sec. That's quite enough of that for just now. You'll see in the left hand corner of the audio I just recorded a yellow number. Now what that is, is the amount of takes that have been recorded. Now all you need to do is just click on the yellow number and it'll bring up a drop down menu showing you a list of your takes. All you need to do is just select a take to here, play it back and there you go. Want to hear a different take? Click the number, select it from the list and hit play. Simple as that. Groove matching. Now, groove matching is great for fixing any little timing problems that may be present in your project. It's also quite good for fixing any big timing problems too. You can see the claps are out of time, the guitar is awful and the bass ain't too pretty either. Luckily, it's really easy to fix with groove matching. Just select the track that you want to be your timing anchor within the project. Click the star to the left hand side of it and it'll bring all the other tracks in your project in line timing wise with it. And you can see that completely fixes it. Everything's exactly where it should be in time. Dead easy. Now that you've recorded your masterpiece, you're going to want to share it with the rest of the world. To do that, hit share in the toolbar at the top and select send song to iTunes. It's a good idea to have a specific iTunes playlist just for your GarageBand projects, just so you know where things are going to end up when you export them. Now from here, you can change your artist name, your album name, all that good stuff but it's not massively important just now. What is, is choosing whether or not to compress your project on the way out. So if you're going to do something else with your project, if you're going to get it professionally mastered or something like that, it's probably a good idea not to compress it. That way you'll save 100% of the audio quality. But if this is it, if this is the final version, go ahead and compress it. You'll save space on your hard disk and it'll be easier to share, especially online. So we'll just choose the MP3 encoder, that seems to be the, the universally preferred one. And audio settings, all that basically does is change the quality of the audio once it's been compressed. So the higher quality one, the 192 kbps, that's generally the same as a CD quality, if you remember CDs, kit. Myself, I'm a bit more picky. I prefer something higher like 320 or 256 kbps. But it's entirely up to you. Once you're done, hit share and wait for GarageBand to convert it for you. Once it's done, iTunes will automatically open and voila, there's your track ready to share with the rest of the world. If you like this video then hit subscribe and if you want more great GarageBand tutorials then make sure you come and check out the GarageBand guide Dot com. The link is in the description. Bye for now.